Welcome to my social survey design and analysis research presentation. This presentation will look at the confidence people have in the government from both OECD countries and non-OECD countries. More specifically, it will look at the level of confidence both males and females have in their elected national governments. To gain a better understanding of why I've chosen to split this research up based upon OECD and non-OECD countries, we'll just briefly look at the characteristics of OECD and non-OECD countries. OECD is an acronym that stands for Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development, which includes about 30 industrialized democracies. The general rule is that OECD countries have met the standards set by the organization to be considered highly developed economies. Non-OECD countries would refer to any countries not a part of this global organization, or countries that may or may not be working towards the standards set by the organization to be recognized as an OECD country. So why look at the confidence people from both non-OECD and OECD countries have in the national governments? Well, the OECD and other organizations have published data relating to a growing trend that the member nations of the OECD have in their national governments. So as we can see here, a Newswire service, the first point here, Travel Impact, published a story where they claim today only 4 out of 10 citizens in OECD countries say they have confidence in their national authorities. Furthermore, the OECD's Government at a Glance publication uses data from the Gallup World Database that shows the decline in faith a person from an OECD country has in their government. This has been an ongoing trend over the recent years. The study suggests that most lost faith due to the global economic crisis, which has undermined trust in their governments. Furthermore, the more confidence someone has in their government, the more trust they have, which is essential for the success of a wide range of public policies that depend on behavioral responses from the public. To put this into perspective, this graph is from the OECD website that shows the percentage decline for the trust national governments a part of the OECD. So in 2007, Greece is at about the 40% mark, and then by 2012, the trust that people have in their government is at about the 13% mark. That puts things into perspective for you. So for my presentation, I've chosen two variables, V138, confidence in the government, and V235, gender. And I split these using the split file option in SPSS to separate both OECD and non-OECD countries. The first step in my data analysis was to gain an understanding of these variables. This was achieved by creating a cross-tabulation, and then bivariate analysis was also undertaken. I should first say, before I get into the analysis, that the data I'm using is from the fifth wave of the World Values Survey. The cross-tabulation here shows the confidence in the government both male and females have, and is split by the characteristics whether they are part of the OECD countries or not. So now some notes on these variables here. They are all categorical, sometimes called a nominal variable. These variables are categorical as there doesn't appear to be any specific order to variables categories. The top half of this table highlighted in green are OECD countries, while the orange rectangle highlights non-OECD countries. Furthermore, the totals here show that there's almost five times more participants that are from non-OECD countries than an OECD country. This is highlighted in blue. From this cross-tabulation, it can be seen that in an OECD member country, the green box, 47.1% of males and 52.9% of females have a great deal of confidence in their government. Furthermore, if you were to add the counts together for both males and females, those that have a great deal of confidence, quite a lot or not very much, you'll find that 85.52% of people from OECD countries have a degree of confidence in their government, while just 84.17% of those from non-OECD countries have some degree of confidence in the national government. Now, if we look at the confidence in governments for non-OECD countries highlighted in orange, 
you'll find that 50.3% of men have a great deal of confidence in their government, while females have 49.7% confidence. Now, this is highlighted in yellow now. This is an interesting relation for those that have a great deal of confidence in the government for both non-OECD countries and OECD countries. If you look at a great deal of confidence for OECD countries, men have considerably less confidence in their government than their female counterparts. However, in non-OECD countries, men have considerably more confidence in the government than women. This is an interesting reflection and perhaps Maybe it shows that in underdeveloped economies that men have more power than the women in the non-OECD countries. So this graph here shows the number of participants from each country, categorized by gender and whether they are a part of the OECD uh, member nations or not. So from here you can see there is far more non-OECD participants than OECD participants. Um, it's, they're separated by thousands in that graph there. So this graph here shows what the different genders think of the governments in an OECD country, and the next slide will also show that, except for the non-OECD countries. So you can see, see here that there is quite an even spread um, between quite a lot and not very much confidence in the government. There's around 700 that hold no confidence at all in the government, and about half of that support the governments a great deal at the other end of the graph. So there's quite a big difference between the bottom and the top half of the graph. So graph 3 here shows the confidence in the government those from a non-OECD member nation have. Surprisingly it's awfully similar to the confidence levels OECD nations have in their governments, except there's a much larger number of participants. So in order to show you that this data represented is significant, I've undertaken a Kramers V test which was ran as this applies to the fact that more than two variables were explored. The, the Kramers V test helps to determine the strength of the association after chi-square has determined the significance. As such significance is 0, 0.000 for OECD countries and the value of Kramers V is 0, 0.042 you can say that the correlation of the OECD Kramers V is weak, which transposed to a percentage of just 4.2. Furthermore, you can see that it's just 1.8% of non-OECD countries. However, because the significance is so low for OECD nations, the probability that the relation between the variable found is a fluke is low. However, for non-OECD nations, the value of P is 0 0.001, which indicates there's a 1 in 1,000th chance that the re relation between the variables found in the sample is a fluke. So the skewness of a graph is determined by the direction of its tail. If the scores are bunched up toward the high end, the graph has a negative skew. So these two graphs for both OECD and non-OECD nations shows a negative skewness. It's not too drastic, however there does appear to be a, a negative skew in these graphs. However, the negative skew is more drastic for non-OECD nations, which indicates there is less confidence in national governments of non-OECD nations than what there are in OECD nations. So what does this data tell us? Well, the data in this presentation supports that there is no significant difference between non-OECD and OECD nations. The graphs and data show that no matter if you're from an OECD nation or not, you're likely to have little confidence in the elected governments. I'll just finish with this. In fact, as polls, elections and referenda show, people's confidence in government seems to have weakened and their sense of dissatisfaction growing. This disenchantment spills beyond the ballot box, as it is shown by demonstrations occasionally even ending in disorder. All democratic governments depend on public support, that means garnering trust, which people will invest as long as they are convinced that the government will act in their interest and that of society as a whole. Thank you for listening.